Thank you. Hey, everybody. So thanks for joining us. Happy fall. We're here in Atlanta. And I have to say, it's almost a little bit summery. We Today we were 80 degrees, but all of our trees are orange and beautiful. And we've got fall colors everywhere. So in honor of my favorite season, tonight we are painting um, a cute little fall sign that you can keep out through Thanksgiving and through the entire fall season. And it says, hello, pumpkin. Um, a little bit unique to tonight's class for lots of you that join us on our Michaels classroom, we do traditional canvas painting with folk art acrylic. And today we're doing something a little bit different, kind of a watercolor technique using our folk art home decor chalk as the base, which makes it kind of like a watercolor application. So something unique and something fun. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that Stephen is also in the studio. So throughout our entire class, um, if you have any questions, any comments, or you want me to hold something up or anything to make your class perfect, uh, message Stephen in the chat and he'll get right back to you. Okay, so with that said, the first thing I wanna show you guys is all of the supplies that we're using tonight. And I always get the question, what if your wood sign is a little bigger or it's a little smaller, or maybe you got a tall skinny sign that they have at Michael's. Really, it's more about the technique and it's and anything that I teach you can be adjusted to that. So don't not take our class for that reason. Um, color palette, if you don't have a blue and maybe you want your frame um, to be a plum or a green, have fun with it and and definitely make it your own. But it's all about the watercolor technique, um, kind of the pen and ink after, and just really some fun applications with our folk art acrylic paint. Okay, so with all of that said, the first thing you are going to need is your wood um, sign that I got at Michael's. Mine is a 12 by 12, that's what was on your supply list, and it's painted white with the natural wood border. We're gonna be using mostly folk art acrylic paint and we've got a really limited, but a really great color palette. We've got Thicket, we've got Navy Blue, we've got Cinnamon, we've got Pure Orange. Let me show you, Pure Orange. Those are really just the contrast and the plaid and the pumpkins. And then we have got Medium Gray and Camel, which these will create the plaid background in our in our fall sign. And then the key to tonight's technique is folk art home decor chalk paint. Anyone that's not used chalk paint before, it is ultra, ultra matte. It is the most matte finish of any paint out there. And what it does, well, it's ideal for base coating furniture and refinishing, but a little tip when we're painting with folk art matte acrylic, is it creates such a matte base coat or background that it kind of allows the paint to work like traditional watercolor. So you get this really beautiful layered wash, you get these blending areas of kind of a traditional watercolor technique. So all of that is due to our um, Book Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. And then we're using a CraftSmart a variety pack of brushes. But what I like to tell everybody, if you don't have these exact brushes, that's okay. Make sure you've got a large brush for base coating, maybe a medium flat brush, and maybe a smaller flat brush, because that's what we'll use to create our plaid. And then really just one more flat brush. So any assortment of flat brushes would allow you to create today's project. All right, you will need a black permanent marker, a thin, whether it's a Sharpie or a paint pen, but a black thin permanent marker, water for your brushes, paper towel, palette, and a blow dryer. The great thing about tonight is you're gonna learn to paint this painting in one hour. And to do that, we cheat a little bit and we use a blow dryer to dry um, the different uh, stages of our project. Alrighty. So with that said, the first thing I am gonna do, which feels might feel a little bit backwards, but we're doing that again because of the rule of an hour. We are going to stain our frame. And to do that, I'm simply gonna put some of the navy blue onto my palette. 
I'm gonna get my largest flat brush and add a bunch of water to the edge of that paint. If you want a solid navy, use it right out of the bottle. But if you want to show that really pretty wood grain, then use a lot of water and just tint it with the navy blue. You can see all of that wood grain is showing through, which is actually what I love. Natural wood is such a popular trend right now and any elements, whether it be knots in the wood or the wood grain, any natural elements is just a really popular look. And we're doing this first because we're gonna base coat that flat area. And this way, we don't have to be super careful because we know we're gonna base coat right over any blue paint that gets on our background. I'm just going in and out of the water and then dipping in the navy so that I've got a, a stain or a wash. I hope you guys can see how pretty that wood is. Oh, maybe like that. Yeah, you can see all that really pretty wood grain. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the outside edge. Oops. A really, really wet brush. That's actually where you guys will see. See how it's just, it really works exactly like a stain. You've got that vibrant navy blue, but you've got all of the character in the wood. So many different things you can do with the folk art acrylic. One more side. All right. So I've got a really, really rich navy blue, but more as a stain, kind of has a denim and a navy blue feel. Now, if you guys have any paint that's really watery and really runny down here, just take a paper towel and dab that out because you want it to be dry when we apply our base coat. Okay, any questions? Because if not, I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer so that it's dry so that we can do our base coat on the base of our sign. Think we're good? Okay. Okay, and you guys can see, like if this is a little damp, the outside or the top, that's totally fine. It's not gonna affect your project. It's really where the blue meets the area that we are gonna base coat next. Okay, so now with your white folk art home decor chalk paint, I'm actually gonna skip my palette and squeeze it directly on my wood sign. Oops. 
And now I'm just gonna do a nice even coat on the bottom. And what this does is it, again, it is such an ultra matte finish that it allows you to do some really fun techniques that are kind of unique to watercolor where you need the paint to bleed and run and, and blend together. And so this folk art home decor chalk paint allows you to do that on wood. It kind of makes it the same characteristics as if you were working on watercolor paper. So it's a really fun, unique way to use the chalk paint. If you're not all the way up to the edge, that's okay. You just want to get as close to that edge as possible. But if you're nervous to get close to the stained blue edge, just get almost all the way. Just a nice, even coat. I need a little bit more. Okay. Smooth that down. Okay. So you guys should have a nice even coat of white home decor chalk paint. Any areas are thick, and you've applied too much paint, just kind of scoop that off and make sure it's a nice even coat. All right. So if there's no questions, I'm going to also dry this with the hair dryer because we want it to be completely dry to do our fun watercolor techniques. No questions? Okay.
Okay, I think, yep. The Home Decor Chalk Paint matte finish dries really, really quick. All right, everyone. So you should have the beautiful stain on the outside and you should have a matte uh, white base for the for the main part of your of your sign. Okay, so the first thing that we are gonna do is create, let me sneak this in here so you guys can kind of have it as reference. We are gonna do a very, very fun, loose, kind of a country plaid. I don't want anyone to overthink it. I don't want anyone to think that because I've got two grays and then two and a half inches of white and then two tans that yours has to be exactly. Remember, it's all about the technique. So the technique we're gonna use, two colors. I'm gonna use camel and I'm gonna use the medium gray. Separate those on your palette because we're gonna be adding a lot of water. And then pick out, clean and wash your flat brush. Oops. And we're gonna start with our medium or our number eight flat brush. And we're gonna start with this gray and we are going to add a lot of water to our gray. So it's really mostly water with a little bit of the folk art medium gray. I always add the water and pull it from the side of the puddle of paint rather than try to dilute that whole piece. Okay, so I've got really watered down paint. Now this is, I didn't provide a pattern. If for anyone that's ever taken a class from me, I don't really like to provide patterns. Um, not to be mean, I promise. But because I think when a pattern is provided, so many people are wanting to just color like a coloring book. Um, and so we're gonna learn techniques instead. Here's so we have a question. Okay. We use floating medium. So floating medium, Andy Jones, um, is a fabulous product. And what floating medium does is you still have a lot of control. So your edges will be really, really straight. Um, you won't have, one of the popular looks with watercolor is the paint kind of does its own thing. You get these irregular edges, your lines aren't straight, wherever there's moisture, your paint leads into that. So you absolutely can because you'll get the transparent look, but you just won't have a loose edge like you will by using water. But yes, it'll give you the same wash or watercolor look. Okay, so what I like to do instead of a pattern is I use water as my pattern. So clean your brush, Put it just in the water and draw the first line with nothing but water of where you want to start your plaid. And you guys, I don't think there's, oh, maybe if I get a glare, okay. See how I'm, there you go. See how I'm creating my pattern by just wetting that matte paint. That will help you get a little confidence, know where you're gonna apply your first bit of pattern. It's great for placement. Using the chisel edge, I'm gonna do a thin line right there. So make your plaid what you want it to be. If you want it to be just thin lines, if you wanna follow what I'm doing, I've got a thin line. Let's see, maybe if I get the glare and then two thicker lines, and then I'm gonna do one more thin line. But just be really creative and do not worry about a perfectly straight line because again, this is really organic and really natural. Okay, so I've kind of got my pattern. My first, I wanna get that glare so you guys can see it. My first four lines, I'm going into that watered down gray and I'm just gonna float that color and see where the color is staying where my water or my pattern is. You don't wanna use folk art out of the bottle because you want that really pretty water color look. 
And I'm just brushing that really onto my wet watered down pattern. You can keep overlapping if you want a darker gray. I'm gonna keep mine really light. And using that chisel edge, I'm doing the same thing on that thin line. And I've got one more thin line right there. We're just starting to get the layout of our plaid. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna add water to that tan or that camel. And if you guys want your plaid just to be maybe gray and navy blue or gray, two shades of gray, you do more water and less water. Again, personalize it and make it whatever is perfect for your home decor. All right. So because I want my plaid to be, you know, very country, very traditional, I'm going to measure with my fingers, maybe three fingers. And using just water again, I'm going to apply a pattern or just a wet area that represents where I'm going to add color. So I'm only doing water. So I've got two stripes. Let me see if I can. Oh, there you go. See the pattern I've created just with water. And then I'm going to do a thicker stripe. If you want a thicker stripe, you can use the same brush I'm using, or if you're more comfortable using the larger brush in the set, that's perfect too. I'm gonna do my plaid a little bit different tonight. I'm gonna have one stripe that's extra thick, and then I'm gonna end with a thin one. Here's some other question. Okay. Do you have to wet the, pad, the plaid pattern, or can you just paint? Uh, you know what you can just paint on the plaid the difference is is you don't have the confidence of a pattern of knowing where you're going to apply your paint um and you'll get a little bit of a drag which isn't a bad thing at all you just have to know that you're going to have to continue to add more and more paint just to get that consistent line but you absolutely can the water is kind of more it's really more a confidence builder. It allows you to apply a pattern that's not even on there because if you decided you didn't like the composition of your stripes, you could blow dry that water area, you know, back to dry. And then you could start over with a thicker stripe or a thinner stripe. So it's really whatever you're comfortable with. It's just kind of a fun way to apply a pattern because we're doing this watercolor technique. Good question. Okay, now I'm gonna do my thick stripe. This is a great place to see though. See where, watch, let's see if I do it. So I am applying the paint, but see how it goes exactly where the water is, watch. It will stay within that area and bleed only to the area where the water is. So it's a, just a really fun application. Something a little bit different than traditional acrylic paint. And then I'm actually gonna go back into that gray for my last little stripe. A little bit more paint. You're just creating a really fun plaid fall background that will complement your pumpkin. You can add a little bit more color if you want a little bit darker gray, but don't go too dark because we're going to go in and add the details to our plaid as one of the final steps. Okay, another thing I tell people whenever we're doing a class, so I am more comfortable painting top to bottom. We are now going in and we're doing our horizontal stripes on our plaid. 
rather than me go left to right and paint horizontal, it's more comfortable for me to paint top to bottom. So I'm simply gonna turn my project so that I'm pulling towards me. One, it'll allow me to get a straighter line and I'm just more comfortable painting that way. Okay, so because our plaid pattern is already kind of falling into place, now I am going to add water to my tan and I am gonna drag a line directly through that wet paint. I'm not applying a pattern with water because there's no need because we've already started to create our pattern. Still very watered down, allow it to remove paint and go right over your first strike. I'm gonna clean my brush, then I'm gonna go into the gray. Lots of water, mostly water, just a little bit of color. I'm gonna do another stripe that size. I'm gonna skip kind of a big area, maybe maybe four fingers. I'm gonna go right back into that gray. The reason I'm skipping is I prefer this type of pla plaid with the big open areas, but I also don't want my pattern to be so busy that it takes away from my pumpkin. I like the white popping through. Maybe I'll do a thin stripe next. There's so many different plaid patterns out there. There's no right or wrong to how you configure the size of the lines to create your pattern. Let me hold that up. Can you see how the watercolor, because we're working on the matte folk art, see how you get all those layers of color? Okay. I think I like the gray best. So I'm gonna go back in and do another gray stripe. And then I think I'll do one more tan and then that will be the end of my plaid pattern. Okay. Any questions, Stephen, on how to create the plaid? No, I think we're good so far. Okay. So you guys, we are going to blow dry it, but this is a spot where if you have a lot of moisture, I've got a lot of moisture on my canvas from applying my pattern and using watercolor. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer, but be really, really, really careful and stay a far distance away because you don't want to blow that watered down paint at all and mess up your plaid pattern. So if you've got big areas of water, what I want you to do is just dry it a little bit so that we can do the next layer.
Okay. Stephen, I have to ask, because you always know, what is this? A multi-use heat pool. This, I'm normally a blow dryer kind of girl, but this little guy is a fabulous tool. Um, it just kind of allows you to control the air just perfectly. Okay, so find the top, make sure you're at the top of your canvas. And what we're gonna do is we are going to just barely accent the overlapping sections of our plaid. So camel, camel, camel. I'm gonna, with a wet brush, mostly water, but a little bit more of the paint. So your color is a little bit darker. All I'm gonna do is paint where it would overlap. If you ever notice on a plaid pattern where two colors overlap, it's always a little bit darker. Not, it's not perfect, you guys. It's not a perfect square. It's not a checkerboard. I'm just applying darker or less water in that same camel color where the lines overlap. That'll give you some dimension to your plaid pattern. Can you see how just that little overlap gives you so much detail. And it's only where two lines overlap. I'm gonna do the same with the medium gray, mostly water, but a little bit more gray than we did for our original stripe. And I'm just applying that. Again, not perfect, but applying that where the plaid pattern is overlapping, but still very watered down and a really nice organic watercolor application. But see how just little steps like that defines your plaid and gives you all the details that you would have if this was traditional fabric. Maybe right there. Let me go back into the camel, do a little bit right here. This is a great pattern for Christmas. You guys could do ornaments or you could do wooden boxes. You could do a wreath, any wood surface that you wanted a really nice plaid background before you painted your Christmas elements. This would be a great technique to do. Okay, so my plaid is done. If there's not any questions, I'm gonna do exactly what we did and I'm gonna just get it a little bit dry for our final pumpkin. Good.
Okay, so everything should be dry or pretty much dry. Okay, now the fun part, guys. Now we're going to do our pumpkin. So you're going to need a little bit of the bright orange or the pure orange and a little bit of the cinnamon and just a little. And then a little bit of the thicket, which will be for our stem. And what we are gonna do is exactly what we did with the plaid. If it gives you confidence and you wanna apply some kind of pattern, we're gonna do that with just water. So using just water, I am gonna wet the area that I know I want my pumpkin. And I don't want him to be a perfectly round ball. So I know I'm gonna create that top section where his little, let me pull that in, where his little stem comes into the picture. More of an oval edge. And then his little bottom is almost gonna be a little bit scalloped. And not big puddles of water, but just enough to give you confidence confidence for where you're going to apply your really pretty orange. Your plaid's going to come through, which is what you want because that's what makes it really traditional like watercolor. Okay, just like the plaid, I'm going to mix water with the orange. And this orange is such a vibrant color. So I always say more water because you can always go back in and add paint, but you can't take it off. Okay, and then I'm just going to start layering the orange. I'm gonna go kind of the natural curve of a pumpkin. I'm gonna do the little scallops at the bottom and just kind of get, oh, the placement. I knew I wanted him a little this side. I wanted to leave room for my stem. Once I know I like the application, I'm just gonna continue to go into the water and into the paint, but not really base coating back and forth. Just applying color, kind of watching where it goes and what it does, and then just layering. I want a little bit of that cinnamon because I love kind of a darker, warmer, orange but you can see because of the water base coat it all just kind of blends together on its own it's kind of doing the work for you it's blending and shading and highlighting but it's creating all of those different layers of color i want my plaid to show through that's one of the really unique qualities of watercolor is all your different layers of your composition come through. I don't want it to be a solid orange or a solid cinnamon. So I'm overlapping a few areas to allow more paint to create a richer color. And once you get the level of blending that you want, clean your brush and I'm gonna go into that dark green or that thicket. And actually, you know what I might do for the first time? I'm gonna switch to a smaller flat brush. Use whatever brush you're comfortable with, but just because my stem is really the most detailed section. So I've got thicket and then mostly water and I'm gonna just kind of Sketch where my stem is going to go. Everything about this is really organic and natural. So your stem, it doesn't have to match mine. It can be taller and curved to the left. It can curve to the right. You just want to place it on top of your pumpkin. And then by going back and forth into that paint, I'm allowing that. Let's see if I can hold that up. Yeah, the water and the amount of water you use is what gives you all of that shading and highlighting. 
using this smaller brush, I'm gonna sneak into the orange. Actually, I'm gonna sneak into the cinnamon and the orange. And I'm gonna do the little part of the pumpkin that would kind of be on the very top or up there behind the stem, just to give my pumpkin some dimension. I'm gonna make that a little bit more scalloped. Could always go back in and make him larger. or a little bit more defined and that's what I did right there. So you guys, that is our that is our watercolor pumpkin on our watercolor plaid and even that if we don't do the final stage which is the pen and ink which we're going to do next, that's just a really great design for fall home decor. Really cute kind of a a country fall sign that you can give as a gift or hang in your home. Okay, any questions about the watercolor pumpkin? No questions. I think we're ready to get on to pen and ink. Okay, pen and ink next. But here we go. We've got to have our our pumpkin dry. So blow dry and get your pumpkin dry. Okay, the last step, which is super fun. And this, if you guys like it as it is and you like the soft watercolor, skip this step. But this is just allowing you to bring out some of the detail. And the only, there's really no rule. The only trick to this is I say, don't outline your paint line exactly. You want it to be offset a little bit. You want it to be really loose and fun. So you're almost sketch, sketching or doodling on top of what you've applied with watercolor. Okay, so where to start? I'm gonna start on my stem. Just gonna do a really jagged edge. And you can see I'm outlining, but I'm not letting that paint. Let me hold that up. See how I'm not letting the paint guide me exactly. I like where the detail is on the orange and it's a little bit on the white. So you guys just doodle. If you wanna do a little curly cue that lots of things are decorated with for fall, lots of pumpkins, add a little curly cue, but just outline, add some details.
kind of define that little scalloped edge on the bottom. Kirsten, I have a couple of comments on that. Okay. Uh, Trisha says, I can't wait to try this. Looks like so much fun. And Lucy B says, that was fun. Oh, I love that. I hope you guys had a great time. I like to try a little different technique just because we teach so many great classes. And I just want you guys always to have new and exciting things to put into your, into your craft bank. Let's see, this marker's a little bit better. I'm gonna do another little curly cue because I like it. I like a really loose doodle. So you can see, I just added the details with the marker. And then if you like your handwriting, maybe you want your kid to do it and you could give it as a gift, um, you are gonna add Hello Pumpkin. And you know what I'm gonna do a little different this time? I'm just gonna do script and just write it directly on my sign. A little tip when you're doing lettering, which I guess I think everybody knows now, is on the downstroke. So up, down, up, down. I'll see if you guys can see that. When I do the E, it would be up, down, on the downstroke. If you make that a little bit thicker, you get that really pretty hand lettering. Hello? I didn't mean it like, hello? I don't have great handwriting, but years ago, someone taught me that little on the downstroke. And my handwriting's not too bad. Kirsten, I've got another comment I want to read to you. Oh, let's hear it. This is from Sharon. Sharon says, love to learn how to use my full guard acrylics, love the quality of vibrant pigment. Great seasonal project. Thanks, Michael and Vlad, for sponsoring the wonderful Kirsten Jones. Oh my gosh, I love her. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, you guys, this is my favorite part. I can't believe I didn't say this already. So share your projects. We love to see what you guys have crafted with us. So tag us, tag Michaels, post a picture. Um, if you've hung it up and you've decorated for fall with your little hello pumpkin sign, show us that. But we love, love, love to see what you guys have created. Hello, pumpkin. Oh, I just saw where are the specs? They're coming. <laughs> I beat Steven to the punch. Okay, you guys. So watercolor, super fun. Pen and ink, you added everything with your permanent marker or your paint pen. And the little specks is just preference, but it's fun. It's a great way to create that farmhouse look. And I have already got some navy blue. So I'm gonna do my medium brush into that navy blue, lots of water and make it really thin. And then this is just a little tip, nothing, nothing wonderful. But a lot of people splatter by flinging their brush or by raking their nail across it. And then I would splatter Stephen and Stephen would be mad. So a little tip I have is, let me get a little bit more water. Would you be mad, right, Stephen? I, I, I would have to change out of my white shirt. Oh yeah, he is in a white shirt. Is load it with watered down paint, hold it at the end and have another brush, any brush, brush, pencil, and then tap it. And then it's like a little controlled way without painting your neighbor. And you can add a lot of splatter. You can add just a little bit, but it's a fun controlled. For years, the back wall in my studio was speckled and now it's not just my project from that little, that little tip. Okay, so you guys have your splatter, let that dry and your Hello Pumpkin project is complete. So you guys, wait, any questions for anyone that's still crafting? Uh, no last minute questions. Mary Yay. Says, thank you, Amanda says thank you. Yay, well everybody, thanks for joining us. Thanks Michaels for having such wonderful classes and we'll see you guys next time. Happy fall.